everyone, welcome to In The Lab, a podcast that aims to be bringing more light to such an amazing community and an amazing game. This week, I'm joined by the IE Snake main, Tatsuki, a community member who graves back as much as he loves, a certified homie that welcomes all and everyone with open arms, and a player who may have an opinion that a majority may not agree with. All that and more in this week's In The Lab episode. Hello everyone, welcome to In The Lab Podcast, hosted by your very own Dan Lee. So thank you for coming back to another episode of this amazing series. I saw all the great comments you guys had about the first episode, and I'm excited for you all to listen to the second episode. Uh, I'm excited for also my special guest for this episode, as you can tell by the title, but if not, he's a man, a player from the IE who needs no introduction. I'm simply going to say his name and he's going to introduce himself. Today, I have the very amazing, skilled Toski. Toski, how are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful, Dan. Thank you very much for having me on this episode of In The Lab. I love this creation, by the way. We're in the lab. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'm I'm really excited to have you onto the show, you know. Um, you're very you're a person who's very beloved in the IE as well as known as well as hated not in a hated bad way but you know we all love you Toski thank you for coming on to the show absolutely hey hated you know what it is I, uh, I'm sorry <laughs> I picked the characters that I do but at least one of us has fun right <laughs> exactly that's that's what matters the most you know when you're playing smash you just have to have fun in the end you know and for us competitive is fun yes sir okay so before we start um I already said your tag, but if you want to do your tag, your and if you prefer now your real name too, uh, your mains and your seconds or pockets and anything else about you that we would like to know. Go ahead. Absolutely, Dan. So everybody knows me as Toski. You know, I'm that guy. If you're out of the IE, you're like, hey, you're the dude who beat Tyroy. Uh, <laughs> my full name is Dylan Algus Toski. It's a long last name. Don't worry about it. No one knows how to pronounce it. It's chill. Uh, <laughs> for the majority of Ultimate, I have played Snake. Lately, as of like probably three months pre-COVID, I ended up picking up about Rob and a little bit of Joker just to try to have some more fun with the game. Branch away from Snake for a little bit, kind of felt a little bit of, you know, staleness. Yeah. Wanted to mix things up a little bit. But uh, other than that, though, that's pretty much it. I uh, am just jamming with them. Jamming with them, that's... See, I'm surprised about the Joker. I did not know that about you. I knew about the rub. I knew about the snake, definitely. But Joker? Joker is a character that, at the beginning, I, I made some tweets, you know, with the DLCs <laughs> coming out, number one, number two, and number three. Uh, oh, yeah. Kind of got backhanded by Twitter. But Ooh. Joker, I don't know. He mixed feelings. Started out, didn't really care for him. I was like, oh, anime pro tag that I don't know anything about. Persona. Sure, cool game. I'm happy. People are happy, but... Plus first DLC, too. Yeah, for yeah. other than Plant. He was like the the first big drop that got shown, you know? Oh, yeah, I remember that. Uh, But he... Later into the game, watching, you know, Leo play it like Evo versus Tweak and watching just the ridiculous things you can do with this character... I remember one day I was like, oh, whatever, sure, I'm a, I'll am i try it. And I think it was, like, at Friendly's before some tournament. I forget where. It might have been an MTM or something. Makes sense. I think that was still up back then. Yeah. it. I just, I just started playing him. And, like, of course it felt clunky at first, you know? Like, I don't understand his movements, like how you get these weird kill confirms. But yeah. very enjoyable character just to waste time with. Yeah, definitely. That character is something that's, like, the definition of labbing because... I feel like he's the only DLC character that's, this, that's dropped that feels like quick, um, quick hitting, and you can do a lot of combo maneuvers and so on and so forth. You see everything that people have released, not just Leo, but so many other people that have done like combo strings with them. And he feels like I feel like he's the only DLC character that has that potential, that opportunity, you know? Right. The only other one would be maybe Terry, and that's just because he has that ridiculous yeah. fighting game mechanic s character where his yeah, combos are five, six hits long, or he has this <laughs> like crazy hit into a giant looking finisher. But oh, I mean, yeah, he well. he fits he fits the mold. Like Joker is the quick, like slick little dude that 
it's just his gameplay is so unique compared to most of the other smashers it's it's wonderful how in all of the dlcs and everything like that they still find ways to make characters refreshing and not feel like oh this is a clone of x y or z that's so true every dlc are, are have been kind of like their own type of thing you know you have joker like we just just discussed right now you have hero who probably has the most diverse unique move set if not playstyle aside from min min um that's released at that time you had banjo who feels very um I, in my opinion like basic but it just feels like neutral like it means it feels like that character was meant to be in smash um and then you have who's that Altari, who has you know like you said the very fighting game style gameplay you know the auto turn around the different moves the inputs and so on and then you had byleth who i feel like has very unique moveset in terms of respective to their game you know, he has like the three weapons. I never played Fire Emblem myself, so I can't really speak too much about it. Um, and then you have Min Min, who has another great unique moveset that... Uh, the, Min Min is basically a character that doesn't play like any other character. Like, you think you play like... You play Smash, that when you play when you pick a Min Min, it's a whole different approach. Absolutely. And each, each and every character has such a unique aspect about it. It's just phenomenal. Like... Like you said, with Byleth, like, no character in Smash so far has had, like, a move set that has, like, very far-ranging tipper moves, yet also, like, a bludgeon down air slash down smash that can almost one-shot a shield. Oh, yeah. And a tether recovery, a tether that launches you up is such a weird thing, but it's so cool. Because, yeah. like, who would have thought, oh, I want this until you see it? Yeah, I don't think anybody really understands it when they first play her. You know, you think, like, oh, Tether, you just jump. Well, that sounds like anybody else can do that. But then, like you said, when you play Min Min and you do it, most of the time, if not, you're going to be like, whoa, that's actually really cool. Yeah, it's it's just, like, amazing. It, it gives me a lot of hope, too, for the second DLC pass because, you know... Twitter jokes aside about what I may or may not have said about certain DLC characters. Um, I'm very happy with what they've done with Smash so far. So seeing what they have to bring with this year and the end of next year is like, it has my hopes up because I think it's going to reignite a lot of people's passion and bring even more people into the game. Yeah. I cannot wait until locals come back and definitely we're going to be talking about locals later on this episode, but just to say, I miss locals, yo. I miss locals so much. Man, it, it's so hard. I was talking to so many people about this very recently. <laughs> one of one of the I people know, right? that I've been talking with a lot about it is actually not even from the IE. His a uh, tag Stitch Alec. Uh, shout outs, shout outs. We like every single day. It's just like, man, when's this going back to normal? Like, just like miss the idea of missing all these people that you never normally never get to hang out with or interact mm-hmm. with. It's just like. It's kind of like man, I miss that ra- I miss that random dude in the corner at at Smash Forge that I never talked to, but I just he's on my mind. Yes, so his vibe, right now. man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just vibe, just vibing in the corner. Like, damn, I went 2 but I'm, I'm gonna get that res bracket run back right now. See, it's that energy. <laughs> you need that energy from everybody like that. Man, you can't get that just sitting at home. That's Nate right there. That's the homie Nate. That's a Nate. <laughs> <laughs> he he go O two, but man, he's full of spirit. Man, what a guy. What a dude. What a guy. We don't, we don't look, man. I don't see people as bracket results. I see people for people. Exactly, man. Who who cares if you got top three of Smash 4s, man? Right. If you're memorable like that, you go 02, man. That's what matters, man. I want I want to look forward to seeing you every tournament. That's what it is. That's right. You already know. <laughs> Great mindset. Exactly. Well, we can move on to the next segment. Uh, I It's not really a title, but it's more or less a segment I want to dedicate this to. It's called Involvement in the IE. And essentially, I just want to ask you, in general, overall, what has been your involvement in the Inland Empire Smash community? What have you done? What have you, I guess, in any sort of level, given back or been a part of in the team or an event or so on or anything, really? Wow. That's... Like I've done a question. lot more than... Yeah, like, at first I thought about it, and I'm like, oh, this is easy. You know, he's guiding me into something, but... No, this is like open range. Um, okay, so feel free to go anywhere. Like, don't think about too much. It's like, see what comes out of your heart. Speak from your Cora Zone, my brother. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> right now, I am an active member of the Code of Conduct panel. 
Ooh. Um, I am a member of the PR panel. <laughs> nice. Um, I know there's a lot of uh, stuff about that PR. Let's 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 talk about those for a minute. So, uh, <laughs> let's, conduct let's panel. Do it. It's I like run up. it's it's an official unofficial. I'm not really sure if there's like there wasn't really like a voting system. It was more so like, hey, these are figureheads, tos, and trustworthy people in the IE that we want to help make decisions that can make our community safer. And I was one of those people that got picked up and added into the group. I know we haven't had to use it in a long time, which means we're a good community. Thank goodness we don't have to actively be talking about banning or removing people from our scene. But I'm I'm one of those people alongside many other respectable, wonderful people like um, Objection, uh, Rabbit. I'm mm-hmm. very sure Dank is on there. Uh, uh it's like, like five of you guys or six maybe? the conduct panel is large it has it i want to say it has at least like eight to ten people oh eight to ten people and, and you guys has... just like deal with like stuff about uh that pertain to ie in terms of people will like go against rules or something or what exactly does the ie conduct panel entail? yeah it, it, you know? it, it's like a like a safety panel almost, right? So like there's say there's an incident where a player that we've known to have come out to the IE yeah. ends up getting either banned or something from a different scene and their TOs put out a reason on social media for like why or if there are um things that come up against a player, like you know, there's the very large uh middle of COVID thing that happened with most of the top set of players amongst you know the rest of the world the pgr that whole crazy thing i don't even want to go into that but yeah but if, if you want that to know, idea, you right? know if you know you know <laughs> yeah like it's it's us preventing that on a much smaller scale like we just look out like hey if this player got banned because he was like doing things that weren't like healthy for a venue or making normal people there that were at the venue like uncomfortable or like breaking things or like you know worse and worse things like that mm-hmm. it's like it's not like we outright just ban them because someone else banned them like we're not like pointing a finger and say like hey they, they did that we're doing it but it's like we're keeping yeah like cancel culture is awful but mm-hmm. we're keeping an eye out just to keep our scene you know on our toes just to make sure that nothing is gonna bring that here yeah, you want to keep you want to keep the scene, the community open and friendly, but you don't want to disregard the bad things about it because there's bad things in every community, but there can be people there who can ensure that the right things are being done. You know, yeah, make sure and the steps are being taken. Yeah, and the panel, <laughs> I I'm I'm technically like a part of it, but I very rarely am actively doing much with it like i know there's a lot of times where there's some people like um kathy who was i think the the last time there was something that you know the panel had to discuss she actually brought it up because she saw um a post about a player that was like hey i'm pretty sure i've seen this tag around at a couple tournaments so like four to five of them started discussing it and talking about what should get done Mm -hmm. and it's very good that, that we sounds, have that sounds, this that sounds efficient that sounds very efficient it's very efficient because the pool of people that like get talked to amongst it is large enough to where not everyone has to be present at one time yeah. to help make a like healthy discussion yeah and as long as it's a healthy discussion knows, essential. i am yeah. not the fastest person at responding really <laughs> so, no i'm just kidding no. hey. <laughs> i can't say it <laughs> you're like by but, the way i gotta go right now, just right now. <laughs> but i so it's good that, you know, it, even if I don't see the discussion right away, I can faithfully rely on multiple of the people that are in there to provide a discussion on things that should be done or ways to make progress through uh, sorting an issue out. I agree. You know, there's a there's definitely has got to be those group of people that can take care of issues like those. And I know definitely for sure we have such an amazing a uh, talented group of people that can tackle issues like this because you know issues like these are not so not the most comfortable thing to discuss but nor they can nor should they be pushed under the rug you know? right because and, it gets more awkward and uncomfortable to discuss an actual incident instead of you know waste exactly. to, to keep an eye on someone that 
you know, exactly. has had things come up against them. Yeah, and that's what I love about our community too, is that we are all level headed enough to understand that we need this rather than being like, Why is there why is there gotta be this? Why is there gotta be that? We can understand already that there's a safety council for a reason and you don't really have to ask why because you can you can infer that on your own, on your own self. You can understand why we need this and you see everything else happening nowadays, we won't go into that, but showing that, you know, we gotta take care of our own community. We're a family, we gotta stick together in that in that aspect. Yeah, and the IE is, like, I made this tweet not that long ago, but IE, like, is a family. I, I do not care your bracket results. I do not care about, like, the uh, social interactions of people. Like, if you're at a tournament, you are a homie automatically hey. in the IE. That's just how it is. Like, I don't care if I've never talked to you before or if I'm going up and seeing Sam for the 10,000th time. Like, I will – I'm treating you all the exact same because like the way scenes grow is through community involvement and passion of the game right yeah so if you're out here making like of course clicks are normal right like you're gonna have friend groups like oh hey look it's csusb like i'm gonna go hang out with them or like oh yo like it's mtm i'm gonna go hang out with them that's fine whatever but i mean there's nobody that's actively doing that like you know lunchroom thing of oh that's a weird kid i'm not gonna talk to him yeah, it's kind of like you have the people you're comfortable around being with at events, but you can really go to anybody at the event because everyone's part of the community and like talk to them. You know, you don't have any sort of like hatred or anything like that or uncomfortableness. It's just that you have a group you'd rather be around with, but everybody in the community you're cool with. You, I can talk to anybody if I have, if my usual group is not there. You know. Absolutely, and it's it's because you're all there for that collective. You know, smash. It's the wonderful thing about the game is that it brings everybody united under a front together. And exactly. it's something that everybody gets to have fun with. So it, like you said, it, it could be someone you've like barely ever talked to before. But if I sit down and say, Hey, you want to play friendlies? They're probably going to say, yeah, they don't even know me. They don't know my name. Don't know who I play, but they're so willing. And it's what makes it good. Cause then you can start talking with someone that you've never talked to before while you're playing a game with them. You'd be like, damn <sighs> snake, man. I can't, like, I can't get around you know it, man. I like those like... grenades. <laughs> I should die from that instantly. But man, <laughs> but <laughs> you man. know, like, uh, then, and let me ask you this right here, then, because we're talking about the IE and how great it is, because obviously the IE Smash community is amazing. Love you all. How would you describe, what one word would you use to describe the IE Smash community? I asked Hamster this on the last episode as well, and I want to know what one word you would use to describe the IE like, Smash community as a collective whole. Okay, so it, w- it would be as a whole, right? Yeah. Uh, like, when you, th- when, you, when you think IE Smash community, us, that one word comes to your head like that. Yeah, no, it's it's a, it's such a simple answer, Dan, and I said it like three minutes ago. It's family, one hundred percent. That's that's all that the IE is to me. Like I, I don't care how mad I'll get after losing the Spanky. I don't care how happy I'll get after that one time I beat Nitro. Like it, there is nothing that will ever divert when I hear IE away from the word family. Like sure, like uh, I know I know Ryan said uh, that he thought the the correct word was uh, what was it uh, difficult? Yeah, it, it, it was like uh, for the the skill of the IE, right? It was mm-hmm. when you come here, you're in for a shell shock. Like you're in for like a rude yeah. awakening up if you think you can just come in here and do what you want. Do you for me, though, like invade, you know, like it's to me. It, to me, it's just seeing everyone as their personality. Like I I cannot. I can't put it into words enough of how like I absolutely love our scene and how mm. every single person here is what makes the IE the IE. Like there, if anyone ever leaves the IE or like were to like take an extended hiatus, like a perfect example is I'm hit. Tournaments mm. have never been the same, and I'm not talking bracket oh results. God, yeah. They have never been the same when he stopped showing up. Yeah, like with the like he he just brings such a unique energy to events exactly and what i was thinking too yeah, i'm not right. saying it just about him i'm just using him as an example right yeah there are every single person has their energy that they bring to an event so like mm-hmm. when somebody's missing it's noticeable or like you notice that when there's a larger collection of people for the ie i know uh you and hamster touched in on this about the evo thing mm-hmm. where ie just has this like aura of like we all got our backs and we all yeah. want the best for each other and it's it's just a family that's all that it is 
Yeah, I agree. I, I agree with the family aspect and especially those people that you know and that person that them by people that can be different for anybody. For you, it can be I'm hip. For other people, it can be, you know, ketchup. For other people, it can be Toski even, you know. There's those certain people that you, you when you think I use Smash Community or family, those people are you can think of and so much more. Um, and I I, I want to touch on the I'm hip part a little bit more because I remember just thinking, like, I can't, I started in Smash 4 um early on like uh i'd say like midway actually i believe it's like 2016 when i started getting involved in the smash community and smash 4 um uh, and i remember i'm hip was like the undisputed like undefeated you cannot touch them you know you versus them in bracket you going you 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 getting three stock or two stock back then you know <laughs> like you're you're not you the fact that you're like i'm honored to have a chance to play him you know and that's how it is and that's how i always seen him um and they come into ultimate you know you get better and better and you know you you see under you under you you tend to understand why that is you know because you understand the game much better. I remember he he left for a little bit in Smash Ultimate. Cause I remember he was it was active in the beginning and then he left. And there you remember that distinct period where he was gone, right? Absolutely, one hundred percent. I remember it, and it was noticeable. And that's the thing about it. You don't oh, where's oh, where's him? Where's Quentin? You know, oh, dude, he's just focusing on school and stuff. And everyone's like, okay, you know. But then he, it's on the back of your mind, thinking like, man, I can't. I'm I miss seeing him. I remember not only myself, but many other people were thinking, I miss, I miss seeing him. You know, I, miss, I, w- I want to see him around. And I remember the event. I think it was Spanky's birthday bash last year. Um, did, you, did you end up going to that? I don't think I ended up going. And I want to say it was because I had work. But I know I, that it was like a large event. Like a lot of people were there. Yeah, a, a good amount of people went. It was in the backyard of Spanky's uh, place. Uh, and Hip showed up. Hip popped out of nowhere. Ain't no one knowing that he was going to come. He just popped out of nowhere. He's like, hey, you know, like, <laughs> and we're like, hey, but we all scream. We're like, oh, my God. You know, I took, I have an Instagram video on my story that, like, showed me recording, like, oh, my God, Tim. And he was laughing. Everyone was hugging him. I remember Rabbit was there. He's Rabbit stopped working on the bracket just to get off and go hug Hip. That's how, and that's how iconic it was. That's how iconic he is to the IE in general. I might even argue he might be a face of the IE on his Oh, well, no, 1,000% he's one of the faces of the IE. Yeah, like, I agree. He's a face of the IE. Yeah, if he's I, not the face, he's, like, one of the top three. He's, like, Mount Rushmore of the IE. <laughs> his face is yeah. right there. That's actually a pretty cool concept. I can't want to think of that. Anyways, <laughs> let's get, like, what would your Mount Rushmore of the IE be? That's a great question right there. I'm going to keep that. Um, I'm going to keep that in my back man. pocket. <laughs> um, but... He's that moment right there, like flashed back me back, flashback me back. That's yeah, okay, I said it right. <laughs> uh, I was like, flashbacked me back to Smash Four days when I just saw Hip just dominating, and you know, alongside Hip it was Caesar, Ouija, and all of them. Um, but oh just took God. this took me back. Oh, uh, let me tell you about Ouija, man. Oh, I'll, I'll say I'll, I'll go back to that a little bit later, but. He he's uh he's definitely iconic too. That's, he deserves his own episode. I I, I OG wish like, I, Smash 4 I really want to like bring him onto the show for one for one episode just to talk about talk with him. That's... But anyways, you know, like I was saying, Hip was just an icon of the IE. Not was, but still is because he's still active. You know, obviously we're all in quarantine, we don't see each other in person much, but he's still active. Yeah, he. I I actually try to talk to him at least a little bit still because you know outside of smash we're actually like good friends like we've done stuff together that isn't just smash related yeah and uh trying to keep base with him it's it's good to hear that like he's still doing well you know even though we aren't seeing him at tournaments Mm pre-covid and everything he still living his life doing his thing which is good glad to hear he's like doing all right it's and i keep telling him every time i talk to him i'm like look man can't wait for you to come back so i can beat you (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> he's like ha, 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 funny <laughs> uh, right i can hear him saying that too yeah uh no but that was actually uh if we can divert a little bit that was actually one of my first goals in ultimate when i started when i started um getting i good? wouldn't say like, yeah i won't say getting better. better i think i'm getting better right yeah uh one I, think of my... I think that's true for a lot of people too no One of my, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I actually ended up um, playing a lot wet at Razo's house. I would oh. go over and grind with Razo, I'm hip, 
Nitro, and then usually one or two other people. Like I know a couple times Kira Flax was there. I know a couple of times Ketchup was there. Uh, I got invited Lumbre. over one. I was so honored. It's so sick. I love that grind fest because it is. Let me tell you, the wave roller coasters of emotions I felt trying to play Smash while you know getting absolutely destroyed by like Razo's wolf or like I'm hips piranha plant while I'm trying mm-hmm. to play snake and get as good as I can and I'm getting completely destroyed I had the highest of highs and the lowest of lows of like emotional playing that like being like I'm never touching a controller again You're and then like, ranging what am to, I doing you yeah know? and then ranging to like I'm so much better than both of you oh my god I'm the best in the IE <laughs> like there is <laughs> That entire gap is like that's where you would hit that night. And that's that, that's that spark of competition right there. You know, if 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 there's anybody questioning why us as competitors keep playing to get better, that's I think that yeah, example you said right now is the prime reason why. That's the ab- best way you can say it. It absolutely it's that it's that feeling of breaking through the like uh the that metaphorical ceiling. glass ceiling yeah yeah of, I was like, say glass ceiling too yeah you can hitting that next level it's just it's surreal like when you finally when it clicks and you're like this Ooh, is it like oh, oh yeah this is it that's that's what that's just that's competition that's, that's growth amazing. as a player okay she you know that's that that made me think of something right now what what was that metaphorical moment for you do you remember. Uh, Where, like, you felt like, like, dang, like, I think I did. I know what to do now, you know? Um, Do you remember? I remember There's, there's a couple. Like, in four, I won't lie, I was real bad. I was Same. not, I was, I was not good at all. I was literal it, cheeks, bro. I was little cheeks. <laughs> it did not, it did not come to me in four. It came to me in ultimate. And um, I want to say that when it, finally clicked it was probably one of those razo i'm hip sessions later at night where i was playing and i was like ridiculously frustrated and i know they were both both wonderful people love razo love i'm hip to death phenomenal phenomenal people I agree. and they any i know uh, a lot of the times when i would lose because it would happen you know most of the time versus them i'm hip say i was playing razo Hip mm-hmm. would then go, okay, tell him what he did wrong. And, like, they would keep pointing these things out to me. And, of course, in the heat of frustration, I'm you're not like, going to yeah. fix it right away. I'm just yeah, going to yeah, be like, yeah, yeah, okay, up. okay. Like, yeah. leave me alone. Don't, like, don't talk to me. Like, I'm mad, mad. But, like, after a while, things, like, gears started turning. Like, things started locking into place. I started mm-hmm. doing things a little differently. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't remember the game, but I remember the feeling of finally like taking a win off of Razo, like mm. in in friendlies, not not bracket, but like oh. in friendlies, the first <laughs> big like like one of those gotta, nights where I like beat I him and it moment, felt like, like I Darwin. really did it and um, I didn't like, when you feel like cheese him or like or him mess up or anything. Like it felt like a person. solid I mean, I, out. I, play. To take a yeah. I was like Razo when that when was like finding and I was the first that was like that was like the the one It was the first tournament I came back to where I and I would say it, it to came say again that I'm after try each of my big season. PR wins. And I'm so, tell like, you, you might not believe it, but uh, I know before when I played Tyroid, that's right? when I spanked you. That Evo, I think. oh my lord! Something like that. Uh, I, must, well, I think it was bro. in well, February or minute, January. That in a hot minute, but uh, it was when I um, it was when I had that match with Razo. Before that, anything I didn't really like go 100 percent like try to get better. Um, I never right, really. How how long after you started playing banjo? Uh, sh- I mean, banjo what banjo dropped in um uh, October of last year, November. Oh, okay, so something no. new it. So, so yeah, few yeah. I was like, was it November of last? Was it November of last year? No, I don't think so. I, I don't remember. All I know is he was DLC three. Yeah, he was DLC pack. Uh, he was DLC pack three, I believe. He dropped September fourth. That's what it is. September, September okay September so, 4th so I dropped September 4th um and I think in that tournament it, yeah it was like a couple months it was a couple months it wasn't too long um so I was still very early in my banjo skill and I've definitely increased I, feel, I definitely improved a lot more 
then. But it was like it was one of those matches where that that click happened. Like I don't know, I was playing out of my mind. I was playing like calm, cool, collected. I was using my grenade like no other business, you know. Uh, and I happened to take a, a freaking set off of a three, uh, two, one, you know, with the last right. hit. I was like, dang. And it's funny too because. It was like the quietest pop off ever because I think Hamster saw it. And he was like, "Oh, you know, no one was like, yo, let's go." It was like only Hamster seen it, and you know, I think he only saw it. And mm-hmm. everyone was quiet, but I was like, "Damn, good job!" You like, like everyone was quiet, but people like fist bumping, like, "Damn, good job!" Like, damn, beat They're him. Like, like Spanky was like, "You beat him, bro. Good <laughs> shit." You know, like I was like, "Yeah," and I was. It was weird because I was like, uh, "I can't." I was that tournament. I I came in late too because I was coming straight from school, and I had my setup. I had to go pick up my setup real quick, and I was rushing. I was giving. I was late already. But they, had, I was still able to put in bracket. Um, and after I finished my set, my hands were shaking. But I was quite. I wasn't like, oh my god. I was like, hmm. I was like finishing connecting up my setup because I brought my, I brought my setup, and I noticed that my hands were shaking, and I just realized I was like, dang. I should. Fuck, I, I beat. I no, beat it, the it, number it, one it, seed it, of this it, tournament. You know. Yeah, I think it's, the, it's 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 a un, it's a very unique feeling. Of yeah, the, I mean, it's like your first like big win like that. Yeah, and it wasn't like a like an evil pop up or anything. It was just like a, okay, cool, I did that. You were like, yo, like let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, like if you were there, you probably would have popped off for me. But it was oh, very like it was very it was very like it was very uh it was very calm. I guess you can say I popped up in my car though on the ride back home though. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, I, I want to pop off right now. Fuck like, it, let's, let's go. go. Let's go. <laughs> I was in the car driving down, passing by a canes. I was like, let's go. Right. <laughs> it was hey, amazing. Yeah. Any, anyone knows that I am 100% one of the loud people when it comes to pop offs. Like, I will, I will get your back. I will, <laughs> I will flying around the venue for you. Anybody who's listening right now, if you're in a local tournament, just yell out Totsky's name. If you need someone to support you, he'll be there to support you. Yo, I will make them hear the, hear me through their headphones, man. Let's Don't go! Let's go! Let's go, IE! Let's go, IE! You know, stuff like some, that. Uh, iconic phrases that <laughs> I'll save not for the podcast. Not for... <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, it's those iconic phrases that keeps us going. You already know. Well, uh... Uh, just something I wanted to, to ask you, and it's something new that I'm bringing to this episode, and hopefully it becomes a regular thing for the series, is uh, a Smash hot take. Uh, mm-hmm. I know you're pretty uh, known for hot takes. <laughs> so, com forward slash Toski. All of y'all, you already know. <laughs> Drop the joke right are. there. Ooh. But I want to ask you, what's uh, what's your Smash hot take? What's a hot take of yours? I know you have many, and you can choose whatever one you feel like you want to share right now. Um, but what is common, your smash hot take? Uh, most common one I got. Very, very simple, very easy. Like, mm. I say it all the time. People think it's a joke, but I really mean it. Uh, Snake's hot top 10. Bro, I'm ending this podcast right now. <laughs> all right, <then> I you. <laughs> Snake's hot top 10? Wait, what? No. You're 100%. lying. I can... I will give you 10 characters off the top of my head that are better than Snake. Go. Right now? Okay. Does no, that not, be ordered? Don't let that be ordered. Just any no? Like to, okay. not, no, not ordered. Uh, Joker, Pokemon Two, Trainer, three. Inkling, Wolf, um, Peach. Five. Um, it's actually a hard thing about Smash characters. I know, right? You think <laughs> about it, you're like, who? who? I, know, I know the cast, and then you start thinking about it, like, hey, wait a minute. Because Snake <laughs> is top 10, dude. No, it's not about that stuff. <laughs> uh, hmm. I don't hmm. Who else? Uh, what, like, uh, ma, ba, 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 what, you Roy? Let me, uh, no. Uh, hold on. I'm not, I'm, it's I'm some not, hard thinking characters. Like, all of a sudden, you think you know. I'm looking up the roster on my phone. I need this. Hold on. Yeah, Snap. I got you. Roster. But Snake is not top 10. Okay. Snake okay. is not okay. top 10. What no. is listening to this right now? If you hear this and you disagree, you better message Totsky on Twitter or maybe make a post on Twitter saying, like, what the heck is this? I lost a snake so many times. Snake is deaf top 10. You know, tag MVD in this and see what he thinks. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, let's not do that. Okay, let's not. Don't, don't do that. Okay, don't. <laughs> okay so. All right. I got, I, I, I got 10. I got 10. All right. Okay, go ahead. Uh, wait. These so we'll DLC. St- that has we'll, DLC. There we go. Okay, we'll, so. We'll, we'll start at number one again. Uh, Joker. Okay. 100%. Uh, Peach. Okay. Pikachu. Okay. Pokemon Trainer. Okay. Wolf. Okay. Wario. Okay, Wario. Yes. 
Palutena. Okay. Uh. <laughs> That's six right there. Yeah, I feel like I forgot one that I said earlier. Game and Watch. Game and Watch is a seven. Mm-hmm. Um, did I say Inkling yet? No. So Inkling. Yeah, Inkling. You did say that the first time, but the first time, but not the second time, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, Shulk. Shulk. And um, Palutena. Is it Palutena ready? Did I? I no. If, if if I didn't, then um. Ooh. Uh, zero suit. Okay. Damn, zero suit better than snake. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, Mars would disagree. I bet. Oh yeah, hundred percent. This is why I'm not a top player. But <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if I had like a friend of mine who's new to Smash Petitive, he'd be like, "Bro, bro, Incineroar top ten. Incineroar top ten. And, yo, and Hamster Bowser, would agree. With... <laughs> top five. Bro, bro, when I do Lariat, when I, when I do Revenge on you, and I do my side B grab, and I time that, bro, you you're, you're done. Hey, just Finito. yo, get, get into Literally. a forward pass, kills a twenty man. He's broken. Yeah, broken, bro. K rules up throw twenty percent, bro. Strongest up throw in the game. And that's mm-hmm. actually a, that's actually a fact. It Yo. is like the most damaging. <laughs> shout out to Red Fox. Yeah, shout out, shout out to Red Fox. <laughs> I actually know that because that's usually my option. I always want to do damage. I was like, damn, ain't no way it's the most damaging up throw. And I found out, yeah, it is the most yeah, damaging up throw. Twenty in the game. flat. Donkey Kong got beyond the ground. Does twenty point one on still. Oh my! Oh my! <laughs> oh my God! This game, this game is trash. It's game wonderful, is. man. This game, this game is straight trash. Master Smash hot take. Wow, Snake is not top 10 okay everybody who's listening to this right now let us know if you agree or disagree through twitter or social media you know where to find us at dan listo and at what's your ad again toski the way the way is spelled toski toski you can find them there and let us know if you agree or disagree with us we love to see your quote-unquote opinions on that (laughs) quote-unquote opinions exactly well (laughs) We well, wait. wait. No, go ahead. Go ahead. What we'll, you de- say? we'll determine if it's an opinion after we see it. Exactly. <laughs> and if you can beat Tosca the best out of five in uh in bracket, then you can say that Snake is definitely not top ten. See, there you go. So you can agree with me when you lose. Because yeah, Tosk yeah, Toski, Toski makes Snake look top ten, but in his opinion, not top ten. Look, I appreciate it, but homie's lacking. Homie's <laughs> homie's lacking. He's slacking, and Loki he's packing. Actually, not anymore. <laughs> That was Yo, a bar. Brawler's a bar. hurt. Write that down. Write that down. <laughs> <laughs> write that down. Write that down. Uh, well, we kind of touched upon this before already, but the next segment is uh, IE Memories. But we're going to get back into that after a quick break. Make sure you guys stay tuned in and keep listening because you won't want to miss IE Memories and talking to us about gushing more about the IE. Also, coming up, we have Smash Talk. And one of my favorite segments that I did with Hamster frame one questions if you guys like that about the last episode you're definitely gonna like this i got some frame one questions for toski right here make sure you guys all stay tuned you guys don't want to miss out you like that intro track well did you know that our very own Razo from the ie actually produced the track he did it amazingly well, and I couldn't be happier with the end product. Make sure you follow him on his social medias and show some love on Twitter at RazaPCH and on Twitch where he streams regularly at RazaPCH. You can find him doing more music stuff on SoundCloud and YouTube at RazaEDM, and he also streams him producing his own tracks on Twitch as well at RazaEDM. Show him some love and tell him that Dan Listo sent you. Follow us on our new Twitter account. Yes, you heard that correctly. We have a Twitter account now. At In The Lab Podcast. If you have any questions you want to hear or ask on the show, suggestions for me, or want to see instant updates for future podcasts, make sure you give us a follow on Twitter. Thank you. Hello, welcome everybody back to In The Lab. Hope you guys enjoyed the break. Little break from all of this greatness, all this wholesomeness. Uh, we're going to come straight, re- jump right back into it with a little bit more eye memories. And we're going to jump right into Smash Talk right after it and frame one questions to end off this episode. 
one thing I want to bring up about IE Memories uh, was uh, something that I feel like Toski has been known for a lot. For that one uh, video of him doing P Town and <laughs> SNS. I really want to talk about it with you. Oh, Reason my. why is because it's amazing. And also because I took that video too. Yo, that's true. <laughs> that's true. You moved that camera. I did. I moved the camera to you and then like zoomed in. And then you're like P Town. If anybody doesn't know what we're talking about, just look it up or even message Toski can send you a picture of it. Um, and just, I don't want to talk about that, Mary, for a little bit. The fact that, what, like, for some people who might not know, what is P Town? So uh, I'm the self proclaimed mayor of P Town. <laughs> P Town. Self proclaimed. Is... <laughs> self proclaimed. No one else contested it. Um, the Paris, that's where I'm from. P, uh-huh. the, you know, just little, little, not hometown, but where I live, right? Yeah. And. <laughs> Uh, Rockstar Ace and Dank are two players who uh, did the little hand sign for it a couple times when uh, they would be like, (laughs) P-Town. It's hilarious, right? So Dan helped organize and run these uh, weeklies. Or not weeklies. Let's say bi-weeklies. Yeah, bi-weeklies now. uh, SNS. Saturday Night Showdown. Oh, I remember that. No, you're right. Yeah, that's right. Show, I remember. I remember the days. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Saturday night hosted by me, uh, Notorious, and Rockstar. Yup. The uh, the production was phenomenal for it. They had wonderful setups, amazing quality content, and in yes. between matches, they had yep. a large camera that was in the corner of the boxing ring where the stream setup was. We could do a live video of like the actual yeah. uh, place and everything. Yeah, it reminds me of how they had them for, um, what events were they? Like 2GG uh, and all those, like Sagas and stuff similar, like that. Similar, yeah, where it would show, like, the whole crowd. Yeah, it was... Yeah, it, oh, like SmashCon? Like yeah, Smash Con. stuff like that. And it would show, like, the, all the setups and... Yeah, everyone um, just playing and... Every, everyone playing, everyone, like, walking, <clears throat> talking, doing whatever. And I remember oh, yeah. I was walking behind the boxing ring for something, and Dan saw me, and he turned the camera at me, and the commentator like, was like, Tusky! Oh, yeah, and then he's like... <laughs> I and can't I just, see us right now, but I'm doing a peace <laughs> sign right now. <laughs> uh, I, I was in my work uniform because I just came straight <laughs> from work. Yeah, you had, the, you had the suit and tie and everything under that jacket and everything. You have the full up flex. And then I just look at the camera, toss up the P Town symbol, just put it right up next to my head, and I have it as the iconic image. Yep, and then everyone <laughs> knows about P Town. Is it your is it is it your profile pic now still? It it is on Discord on Oh it is on Discord. <laughs> on Discord. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw it right now because I have Discord open in front of me. <laughs> on uh on, on Twitter it's it's something else, but Okay, if anybody's listening <laughs> to this right now, if once so, once I make this alive, I want everyone to I'm gonna post respond. I'm just gonna quote tweet your your announcement quote, tweet, tweet with a picture. <laughs> and with a picture? And then everyone has to do the rendition. Let's take a selfie of them or whatever you want to do and do P-Town. I'm going to do it myself, too. We want to see y'all reply <laughs> to the tweet. It's on Twitter because, uh, you know, that's all really we have right now. Uh, just reply picture of everyone doing P-Town, of you doing your best P-Town. Okay. And we want to see everyone's best P-Town, okay? <laughs> it's, 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 it's amazing. Funny train. Uh I don't even know, like, what made me do it. I just, like, looked at the camera and, like, thought I had to do something because it was, like, <laughs> right? And I'm just, like... And the thing you did was... <laughs> I just... just and you had the most serious face, too. It's just... Yeah, deadpan, just straight at the camera. De- exactly. That's what I loved about it. Not even uh, a smirk. I'm just sitting there, just, like, I gotta that... do my thing. And then I left. SNS had so many <laughs> clippable moments like those. Like, we had That's... that one... I saw the one with... on my phone of Chris dancing to the SpongeBob music and yep. <laughs> walking by. Oh, oh my god! Lord. And What's then the one with the uh, Fonzie, Fonzie waving like, I don't know if you saw that gif. Yes. Oh, yes. I remember I made that gif because it was so adorable. He just waves. I think he's high as fuck, maybe, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but he's eating something and he just waves, and I'm like, that looks like the perfect gif, and I made it to a gif, and has it's 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 just adorable. Perfect reaction gift. That, that's for... the embodiment of fun right there. Just a hello. Yeah. Well, 
um uh, seeing the time right now let's go straight into uh you know what let's go into smash talk and smash talk it's more about you know advice strategies tech general advice just to get better um knowing that you definitely you may uh, did you make pr this past season <laughs> i snuck on as number 15 yeah that's so something you number 15 <laughs> weren't you weren't you on the previous pr too or no uh, I was on, I was off, and then I was back on. I that's think that's what it is, right? I so, think I was like thirteen, not yeah. fifteen. So yeah, thirteen. You went thirteen to fifteen, and because you know you, you're working and all that, so you can't really attend tourneys that often like that. Mm-hmm. But um, um, I want to start it off with this: What is one thing you would tell an up and coming player on how to get better? If this player is, um, uh, they've been playing the game for a little bit, they're getting too competitive. And they understand simple, you know, how to get, you know, how to play. But there's a lot of people who typically, you know, win their round one most of the time. Um, and they usually always lose round two because, you know, you get seated to versus good people. Also me. Two most of the time. Ha! Funny! <laughs> uh-huh. you, mean, you mean me. I'm just kidding. No, 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 you, no you, 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 mean, you mean us in Smash 4. See, ah, there you go. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So if they're like that type of player. And they, they, they just want to know how to get better. They want to know what's one thing you would let them know, tell them like, hey, this is what you should be working on. And it can't be like specific to the person. It's just an overall general, like this is what new upcoming competitive players should know on how to break that, like you like talked about before, that metaphorical glass ceiling. What would you say? Something that a lot of players struggle with, even myself, like to this day, uh when you lose you need to ask questions and hold off on the salt of a loss Mm. like it's okay to be discontent with losing because nobody wants to lose nobody goes to a tournament and says i can't wait to get fourth like Mm -hmm. that's not the mindset but when you lose to someone you need to ask them not just hey what i do wrong but like try to find where you were your weakest in the game and say how do i get better there i think that's essential yeah if, if you're sitting there playing against people who are vastly better than you and you aren't actively trying to get better, then sure, you could take the game for fun. That's fine. But like if you're trying to, like you said, actively get better as a competitor, you need to ask questions that are going to help you break through walls that are going to come up in your way. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't, you're never going to get over that hill and through the first glass ceiling and into, you know, your new heights and levels. You have to be able to ask people, like, what did yeah. I do wrong? Because they probably have a perspective of something that you didn't think about yet. Mm-hmm. And it could I... be something simple like, hey, stop jumping in my face or like, hey, stop doing the same get up option. Like, that's simplifying it, of course. But like, you you sometimes need to just get like not reality check but just shown a different like viewpoint yeah because i i know definitely i think people's prides get also in the way because they think that if they lose that they, they they feel so prideful they don't want to ask the, the the winner like what is i doing wrong they feel like oh no nah, i'll figure it out or not even that they just like don't even say anything don't even think anything they just leave it as is and then later on they wonder man why did i lose it well you missed your opportunity ask why and obviously you can't ask the person days later because they're gonna forget you know if if your match wasn't streamed and it was off stream then yeah they, they're, not, they're not gonna remember it just for you you know be honest no, they're they're like oh yeah i remember the, all these exact interactions like, exactly it, it, and if it's a newer player they're probably gonna remember even less because you know you don't play that much yeah and but, what, what would you say then what if someone's like like shy or reserved where they don't feel comfortable what would you say and a way, the a steps they can take to get more comfortable in asking questions, you know. I know that's pretty, t- that's, pre- that's pretty tough about it, you know. You do it in friendlies, 100%, where you can sit down with almost any player and say, hey, you want, you want to play friendlies? And they'll be like, uh, yeah, that's cool. And you'll start playing, right? Mm-hmm. Like I said earlier, with when you play the game, you're there for the collective reason of the game. Like, I'm not going to force people to interact with me, like, socially. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Like, don't trip about it. But, I mean, if you're trying to get better and, you know, we're playing, mm-hmm. like, there's no reason why during the small talk you can't be like, whoa, why'd that work? Or, like, oh, how'd you know? Because, mm-hmm. like, I'll do that. Like, mid-friendly, I'll be actively talking to people. 
yeah. be like, hey, like that was stupid, or like, hey, like how'd that hit me, or is that a thing? You know, that's a lot of things. Like, is that true? Yeah. Is that is that a, does that kill? Like that yeah. type of stuff. Exactly, I agree. Um, there's those types of steps you can take to get more comfortable in asking. Like, of course, Smash is not the easiest place to like grow as a social person because. Mm. Uh, of course you're there for a collective reason so it's like at least you have something you can always talk about yeah. but if you're still like nervous trying to talk to people at all it's a little it, it, you can't force yourself that's just something you have to learn to grow out of your shell of yeah but if you're if you want to get better at the game that drive <clears throat> should overcome the fear of asking questions oh you know i agree i i i wholeheartedly agree and i think that um i forgot what i was gonna say but definitely going out of your shell and asking questions is essential and also i think that's something that uh in relation to what we're talking about that people kind of underestimate is the idea or concept of friendlies you know you think that you really only learn in bracket matches but no you can actually learn so much more in friendlies as well and i think a lot of people a lot of new upcoming players or even veteran players too underestimate the idea or concept of friendlies uh, you, you know what? What do you think about that? The one, the that's friendlies are probably the ninety percent of the reason I'm I've grown as much as I have in Smash. Mm-hmm. I will always keep referring back to it, but like the sessions with Raza, the sessions with I'm Hit, the countless hours I spend playing with like you know MTN members, with Arcister, with like any anyone that like I consistently play with, like. Almost every day, up for the past, like, couple months, but I mean, like, almost every single day when there weren't um, tournaments, I would be playing yeah. Wi-Fi with, um, like, Owo, uh, Hamster, uh, Psycho Shout Mike, Shout uh, out. Shout out. Java. Shout um, out. <laughs> <laughs> I had to shout um, out. <laughs> like... All of them, like, I would be playing Wi-Fi, like, every single day until unholy hours. And, like, Mm -hmm. even if it's just Wi-Fi, like, I'm still practicing. Like, it's the idea and the flow of concepts. Just because it doesn't work on Wi-Fi or just because it, like, you know, oh, it's Wi-Fi, it's not real. That's not true. You're still... You're still learning. You're you're doing things that are going to, like, muscle memory train you. And be like, oh, I found myself in this scenario. I know these things work. Mm-hmm. i like, agree friendlies yeah. are the most important part about this game because you, you're not only playing in tournaments if you think about it tournaments are a very small percentage of what you actually do when you play smash it's mm. just tournaments are like the testing ground right yeah that's where you go to be like hey here's everything i've learned in the past however long like, like the final I'm exam show it. yeah look at it that way like practicing at home is like homework. the homework the you know locals are like quizzes majors mm-hmm. or large out-of-state tournaments are like the finals or the tests mm-hmm. the tests like damn how are you gonna do now you yeah know? that's like that's your that's your proving ground that's what you're there to do mm-hmm. like you don't just say oh yeah i'm gonna get it in a smash i'm gonna go to evo and then big house and like, that's it you know that, that, that's not how that works gonna, you can't you can't go to evo or big house in the mentality of like it's a it's homework or like I'm gonna learn oh, yeah, Smash yeah. at Evo, like yeah, you you will learn, <laughs> but <laughs> you will learn as well because you know you've ever seen a variety, variety of people that are various skill levels that you don't even know, and that's the thing about locals that you're around people that you recognize at least and you understand different people's skill sets because of their bracket results. And something you know? that's very important about friendlies and locals is it's good to play different people to learn different play styles and characters and everything. But if you can consistently play with a couple people in like a tight knit group where you can play for extended periods, this is why mm-hmm. I say shout outs to MTM homies. Because I cannot tell you the amount of times I would be at Jacob's house staying up until four, five, six, seven in the morning and then fall asleep after playing Smash after being there all night after a tournament. That sounds because so nice. That sounds- the longer you play with someone, the more adaptive they'll become. Yeah. So you're going to be forced to try new things, condition in new ways, do new setups, you know, pull more and more out of your hat to mm-hmm. be able to throw them off and still achieve victory. And you'll have to adapt back at them. So yeah. there's, of course, like, oh, uh, I need to play Ryan because uh, I want to I want to learn more about Incineroar. That's fine. 
and I'm not just going to play like six games and be like, oh, okay, cool. So that's the Incineroar cheese and that's a basic combo. I know how to fight him. That's not how that works. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to play him for like two, three hours and be like, man, like mm -hmm. I know all of these situations that he's fishing for. And I know that I can't get away with doing the same thing I was doing an hour and a half ago because he's used to it. Yeah. Like you, you need to play people that are going to force you to think and mm -hmm. That's something that a lot of people will struggle with when they're first starting because they're just going to want to play with their friends. It's about their skill level. And I don't think you should be playing people that are significantly worse or better than you. I think you should be playing with people who are slightly better than you. Mm. And that is because you will have to try your best to be able to, you know, even take games, let alone adapt, because they are going that if they have an edge over you, you already have to work harder. And if you're working harder, you're forcing your brain to think faster and do new concepts. Yeah, I agree. And that's the and that's the type of habits that new players and even some experienced players have a tough time doing is reviewing, is understanding why. I had a hard time and I still have a hard time Looking back and thinking what I did wrong, because typically when you play a match, you can't really remember most of the match. If that, if I'm being honest, you know, you play right. a match, you lose it or win it, or you like, for example, you lose the match and you're like, I was doing so good in the beginning, but I lost it at the end. What happened? It's so hard to look back and think what you did wrong because you can't remember every single moment, you know. Right. And uh, uh, by God, hopefully you got it on stream so you can review it. But if not, you know, that's where those questions come in, and that's where like you know, maybe they know, maybe they saw something, you know, and that's where. It's harder to see. It's easier to see what they're doing. It's harder to see what you're doing. And that's, yeah, cause you, that's you right, a huge part of it. Is. Back. Uh, it. It all goes back to that thing of like, you got to ask questions. Like, mm -hmm. sure, uh, playing, playing friendly is help a lot. Mm -hmm. Asking questions help a lot. Yeah. But if you're not finding a mesh to do both, yeah, you're not going to break through. And I know a lot of people, a lot of players, you know, want that breakthrough. It's just, what are you now? What actions or what steps are you taking to get to that breakthrough? Anybody can get to that breakthrough, you know. And even if a lot of people get to that breakthrough, does it make it any less special or unique for yourself? Because each person, you know, gets that breakthrough at different points in time, you know, different moments, different points in time. Uh, different situations, you know. I got my. I feel like I got my breakthrough with Banjo when I was uh playing a bracket match with Chewy King against his Bowser. And I remember at that time I was just like I was on the brink of like I think I'm just gonna draw Banjo because I can't understand him. And I was coming from Wario too, two completely different styles. And I was like that bring him like I just probably just can't play him. You know, it's not my style. Even though as much as I love the character, I just can't play this character. And it's not mm -hmm. until I versus Bowser. It kind of clicked on what I what I needed to do, and then like that next match, I ended up three stocking his Bowser and winning the set, and I won it so, so like solidly. And I was like, I know what to do. It's like my third eye open. I was telling Mal at that time too. I was like, <laughs> dude, Mal, I think my third eye open with Banjo. I, I know oh what to my do. God, Mal. Uh, and Mal, Mal is a, Mal is another look great Mal, icon. <laughs> my set with Mal at Coyote Cross. <laughs> it's another one that made me like that was one of my glass ceilings. Because oh, when I heard that I had to play him, I was like, okay, cool. I got 13th. Mm -hmm. I was like, I lost. I'm done. I'm not going to beat him. Like, I just mm -hmm. lost the cats. There's no way I'm going to come in here and then fight Rosalina and, like, That's my Rosalina, mental. too, so. Yeah. No, that, that that was one of those breakthroughs for me, too. And you're like, yeah, I remember you got up, you hugged up, and then you're, like, relieved. You're like. No, that, I'm <sighs> not kidding you. I had, like, a literal migraine after that set because I was putting everything i had into the game and i was so drained like he, he is one of the most difficult opponents i've ever had and he's it's, such a prodigy in this game he, i wish he played more uh yeah he, he's something like competitive i'll uh, hopefully i can bring him on the show one of these days but uh i'm um, gonna talk more about it but i know that he is such a talented great player uh, but his heart is just not in competition in this. Yeah, he game. just does it for fun, and I, yeah. I respect that's, that immensely. That's even scarier. Like that's yeah, so, I mean, that's for that's you want for fun. I don't want to know what you for serious. Oh my god, yeah, <laughs> you know, right? like man, if we could if we could like turn the switch and make him like try, like, bro. I know <laughs> Caesar Caesar told me so many times. It's like if if Mao tried, 
he could easily make like SoCal PR like no doubt like mm-hmm. so easily. And I'm like, I I believe it. I believe. I remember back then, Smash Four early on, we would always, all of us in our group back then, we would always try to encourage him to, you know, do more and more. And he was almost there, but then um, uh, he just decided not to, you know. And I respect every decision he made. Make sure that. Uh, oh yeah, we can't force him to play the game a certain way, but yeah. it's it, it's like it's, it's for everyone sense. sees it as so much like I don't you think I, about it, and you're like, rude, uh, but like yeah. unused potential, right? Yeah. Like I'm not, I'm not trying to like bash that or make it be negative or anything, but you just see it as like there's so much there, and you just don't want to take it. Yeah. But and you that's know, fine. That's you know, fine. Like, if you don't want to do that, that's okay. Like the talents aren't meant to be forced. Exactly, they're natural, and I think that's what's I think that's what he is. He's a natural. Um, he makes you makes you wonder like, what am I doing wrong? But no, everyone's different. Everyone has a natural innate talent for things, and I know definitely Smash is one of those things for him. You know, no doubt. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's Miles. A uh, Miles a whole other topic and uh, segment we can go yeah, into. Whole another beast that's another hour here. right Hidden there. You know, of the IE. Who do we that's, have? Yeah, shoot. Wait, what? Say it again. Hidden bosses of the IE. Let's see. Mao, Chewy right. King was definitely one. Um, Lee Puff back then was definitely one. Lamp. Lamp. Lamp is Lamp. getting more traction a little bit more. But yeah, definitely hidden boss. Definitely hidden boss. Um, also, that one tournament I told you about, I beat Chewy King. Um, I mm-hmm. beat Lamp that same day, too. That same Ooh. night. I beat him 2 1 against this hero. Double big win. I know. That was, that's when I, it confirmed my third eye opening. I was like, bro, I'm getting this somehow. I'm not what I'm doing. And then I lost to John. Right after against the Wii Fit, but his Wii Fit, his Wii Fit's another whole other beast at that at that time. And my banjo level skill isn't like how it is now. So, mm-hmm. um, but early on banjo doing that pretty good. Um, hidden bosses though, Lee Puff back then, uh, Mal, right a lamp. Um, I don't know if you'll consider hockey one, but he's PR so. Uh, he he's he got known in SoCal, so it, it's it's like a it kind of. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, right. Like an asterisk. He's like special case. I think I think there's Lenny Loki. Oh, Lenny Luigi. Yeah, I've heard a lot about him. Very very good. Oh, I know. Um, uh, what's his name? Hayes. Hayes is getting up there. Hayes from, getting up uh, there TV. from CV. Yeah. Oh, like Turtle too. Turtle's a hidden boss too. Turtle. Turtle's uh, fucking Diaga. freaking beast. I don't know what Diago is, but CV very good. There's a lot of hidden bosses in CV, to be honest. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, Riley there's Reeds. so much more. Riley Reads. And there's so much more we could talk about. And that's a whole other podcast. You know, if we do a part two with Toski, um, definitely that's another segment I could bring on for that. Hidden bosses, man. That's a whole other discussion. I think. <laughs> that's, there's, there's just, it's, I used too talented. We're too yeah. good at what we do. Yeah, people still call it sub-region. You know, honestly, we're all in region now. <laughs> I'm just we, saying. We have broken free. We are the region. We have broken the glass ceiling for I. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, we're not no sub region of SoCal anymore. We're a whole new region. <laughs> we're that, new that, region. That's my hot take right there. <laughs> that's my smash hot take right there. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, we're gonna go to one of our last segments um called Frame One Questions. I just love the name I created for that. Frame one questions. Uh it's a segment where I give you a certain time limit, but it's not gonna be like a time like like you have 30 seconds. It's just gonna see how long you take to answer these questions. And okay. I kind of have, like, I kind of have like a leaderboard of all the guests I invite and see who's done the fastest and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and these questions are going to be different from the previous episode. Not all of them are going to be different, but some of them are changed. Um, that I think that I want to ask like our 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 guests for this specific episode. Um, it's going to be ten questions. Actually, I think I asked Hampshire eight, but yeah. I'm I'm Ooh. learning. Okay. I'm, I'm changing okay. as I go. Um, but it's going to be ten questions, and they're typically one to two answer questions. Um, like for example, um. Like, uh, who do you think, who do you think any IE is best with your character? Something like that, right? And you're like, oh, mm-hmm. this person, that person, okay. So that's basically how the questions are, um, okay. and they're and they're gonna be in relation to your main and your main only. So that's Snake, just to let you know. Okay. okay. Oh, really? I mean, Snake? I didn't know. <laughs> you mean, uh, you mean top eleven Snake? Oh, yeah. See, okay, I'll I'll give him eleven. We'll talk. Yeah, eleven. He's, he's, top he's fifteen. A, yeah, top ten. No. He's a gatekeeper. G- yes, thank you, gatekeeper mid tier. Okay. I'll tell you why. All right. So let me get my timer up here really <laughs> quick. You know what's funny? In the meantime, when I'm getting a timer up, Juice gave me a great idea. He told me that 
we should stream these on Twitch. We stream the interviews on Twitch and then edit them and then put them on Spotify. And I was like, that would be cool. Right, it's just, just like cool. those long, awkward pauses are going to be so funny. Yeah. For you. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be like that pause right there. We're just like, yeah. Uh, uh. I've, yeah. I've been wanting to do like a, a webcam type thing. I've been watching like a lot of all dev where they do like webcam and stuff on that where they have. Oh, like, like a video, video thing with it. Yeah, video thing. Yeah. But I was like, some people may not have webcams. Some people may not feel comfortable getting recorded like that. And it's just so much more easier to work around just audio specifically. Man. Audio is a lot easier for editing because yeah. it makes it makes it cleaner cuts because then, then there's no like, you know, awkward cropping of videos to make it. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, it'd be cool for YouTube, but that, that's the later talk. Yeah. That, I always want, I think I just wanted to also put the podcast on YouTube, but not like with video. It's just with like a, like a, a graphic and then yeah. listen in stuff like that. I think that'd be really cool, but that's another discussion. All right. I have my timer up. Like I said, 10 questions. Um, frame one questions. You need to answer them frame one, or else you're not okay. fast. Okay. Ooh. Wait. Whoa, um, whoa, whoa. Not fast. You know okay. who you talk to? <laughs> 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 nah, I mean you play snakes, so you patient as heck. Uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I remember our matches. Oh, we, didn't, we didn't talk about that. Okay, we'll talk about it a little bit. Okay, anyways. <laughs> uh, um, all right. The the timer starts after I read the first question. All right. It's like Family Feud. Okay. Okay. Number one. What is your main's most underrated color? Uh, red and black. Overrated color? Uh, leopard. What's your main's best move? <laughs> uh, up tilt. What's your main's worst move? Jab. What does you, Do you think your character deserves a buff or a nerf? <laughs> buff. What would you buff? Uh, say back here. What is the best IE local? Smashforge, free. What's the go-to spot to eat after turnings? Canes. <laughs> Who's your go-to doubles partner? Arcus Store. Love him to death. And who would you not want to verse in grand finals if you're coming from losers? Spanky. Ooh, that was good, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. It's funny. When I wrote that last question, I was thinking he's probably going to say Spanky or something like that. A spanky 100%. You do not want to verse him in grand finals it's, coming it's from Spanky losers? Or one of those two. I do not want to fight either of them. What, what, why would you say Spanky? I'm just curious. Oh, by the way, you <laughs> got 41 seconds. Pokemon Wait, that's trainer. pretty good. Pretty fast. Oh, that's Pokemon. why. Pokemon, Pokemon trainer. trainer. The Dang. only way I can consistently... I can't even consistently beat Spanky. Never mind. It's like it, it, when I play Snake, I feel defeated because I get Ivysword. And then when I play Rob, I just try to cheese him as fast as I can. And if it doesn't work, I lose. Mm. <laughs> so it's like man i i don't know what to do so uh, my mental would break probably in like game two two or three and mm -hmm. not, unless i get like a steamroll lead i'm not gonna have any any confidence yeah i mean that makes sense you know spank is a very uh great player and i've seen his, his glow up has been tremendous coming into ultimate oh absolutely mm -hmm. uh he himself the myself kind of loom ray uh there's so many players that are Red just Fox like too. Red Fox, uh, geez, trying to think, like, PR-wise, who else, like, really had a giant glow-up? It's, it's insane. There's so many yeah, people there's, there's who so just, many like, people. got so much better. Yeah, it's crazy. I think maybe the new game and a new type of style, too, of the game. Maybe their style fits more of an Ultimate style than a Smash 4 style. Yeah, the run-up and shield simulator. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's a little better. yeah. I mean, you mean walk up and shield because if you run up and shield, you can't shield instantly. No, I'm talking Smash Four. Oh, Smash Four. Oh, okay, Smash yeah. Four, where the metal is dash shield, dash shield, dash shield. You know, it's funny. I wouldn't get too good in a game to understand that. I just played. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I, I played. I, I played, I played Mewtwo. Too. So I, played I just, I just spammed short hyper dodge fair. I, I was Wario. I didn't understand. I always got. I was always so like scared or nervous to use WAF because I didn't want to miss. And so most <laughs> of the time, if not, I never use WAF during bracket matches because I was like. It was at the right time to use it. I can't use it, you know, or I should have used it there, and I can't use it, you know. Yeah, I wouldn't have hit it. It would have missed. He would have yeah. dodged. Or, like, I use it and it completely misses. I'm just like, fuck. You know? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Early on, I learned that. But early on, it taught me, like, you know, you can't depend on WAP. It's definitely your strongest tool. But you can depend on it. If you use it, I'm so good. I can still win this. You know, you got to build that confidence up with the character. But anyways, yeah, you did pretty yeah, yeah. good. All right, what was the time again? 41 seconds 41 is it how fast is that compared uh, to uh well I, it's kind of hard to match it against hamsters because i think i asked them eight questions and i was 
I was kind of not used to answering the question, asking the questions quickly. So, but his was uh-huh. forty-eight seconds. Ooh, see, two one, more two, questions two, and seven three, seconds three, faster. Four, Come on, Ryan, six, you gotta be better seven, than that. Eight, yeah, ask him eight to nine questions, I believe. So, mm-hmm. so forty-eight seconds. Um, yeah, and I asked him a couple of different ones. Like I asked him, "Who do you think is the world's best with your character?" Okay. And yours man, the MVD. No, I would have said Shogun. Oh, I've heard of Shogun too. And then um, let's see. Uh, what is what what is the worst color? I told him what's the best one and the worst one for you. I said underrated and overrated. So underrated, I panicked and said um the red and black is the you, one that I thought of. Because yours color. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like, I think if I if I could go back to that, I would probably say underrated is the um the like regular camo looking one mm-hmm. mm. because I never seen anybody use it. And it's like it's solid because I use it when I'm on green team and doubles. Interesting. Yeah, I think it's like the most basic one. I think I don't think anybody wants to use it solely. You know. No, it's like that in default snake. Like nobody likes them. I was gonna say like if if you asked me like least favorite, I would have said default snake. Ah, <laughs> default snake. Yeah, default snake is pretty bland. It's I like don't blood. like it at all. Yeah, it's like the 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 leopard one too. Is like everyone uses the leopard skin. Everyone. Yeah. Everyone does. Right. You use red and black. What what does Shogun use? Oh my! Does I, I he might use the 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 full black one? Oh, that one's a nice one too. I, yeah, it's clean. I like that. It's like a black mamba. RP. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, RP. Nah, sad topic. Yes, yeah, sad. Topic. Sad. Anyways, I want to ask uh, before we conclude right now. I there's a question that I actually wanted to ask you because I actually want to know who it is and who who it is for you. It's a. Uh, it's two questions. No, three okay. questions. Oh, okay. And um, I know we're kind of pressed for time right now, but I want to know fine. your answer. Okay, it's an I is pertaining to IA players, right? So, what IA player do you love to play in bracket? When you versus when you run into them in bracket, and you're like, yes, and not because you're gonna beat them, but because they're so fun to play with in bracket, like against bracket. Okay. Uh... This one, it's it's so biased, but I mean that's kind of the point of the question, right? Uh, I would have to say that my favorite person to always be able to play. There's two. Uh, there's Arkister Sam. I, I feel because, like Ark was uh, when you said bias. I thought Ark. Yeah, because you know the reason I'm in the game is because of Sam. Reason I've tried to get better is because of Sam. Mm-hmm. Like all of us, like. Anytime we get to play, it's just like, <laughs> it's, it's, I don't know. It's just like another milestone of like a growth. Yeah. And then the other one that if I, if it wasn't Sam, but I'm pretty sure it would be Arkister, um, would probably be the newest like rival, I guess you could say would be Lamp. Ooh. Lamp because is- our sets are always just absolutely ridiculous to where like i i don't know we play so much that it's it, it's always good there's we have never really had like a bad set you know mm-hmm. yeah like, there's been unfortunate sds or unfortunate like wow he really died at like 20 or yeah. like stuff like that but all of our sets always have like explosive things in them yeah, definitely. Lamp is an, Lamp can be like a very like tame player or explosive player because depending on what he gets during the match. Mm-hmm. Oh, on the the hero menu. Oh, on the hero menu. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, yeah. All right. So no, next, it's, it's no cool. go ahead. It, oh. it, th- those would be the two that I would pick. Like right. if the yeah, the, it's it's them, and then like if it were like top player, it would be Razo. Because ah, I have the same mentality Raza, yeah. of like our sets are always amazing, and like we I can feel the intensity. Yeah, we just did a first to ten. He won ten six, but I got an emergency best out of five, and I beat him three two. Um, hey, that's right. But I was like, it's funny because Wi Fi. I think like, am I getting better or is it just because of Wi Fi? And I'm like, hmm. And eh, I'm you getting know what? better. Take it. You're, get, you're getting better. That's right. You <laughs> I was like, I'm getting better. <laughs> yeah. Like, why, why should I just devalue myself like that? Like intentionally? Like, what the fuck? Yeah, no, don't don't find a way to dismantle yourself. Exactly. All right, the next one is. The same thing, but it's who do you hate to play in the bracket? 
Uh, <laughs> I think you already uh, said Lumbre and Spanky, maybe? You want this alphabetical or chronological? Uh-huh. Like, <laughs> there's there's a few. But who's, I'll the keep first, it who's, who's the first one that came to your mind when you when you asked that question? <laughs> it's neither of the ones you said. No way. It's, uh, hats. Who's Hats? Hats. Ooh. K-A-T-Z. Oh, Cats. I think it said Hats. And I was like, Hats. No. Like, cats. Uh, cats? <laughs> Yo, it's... quickly explain to me why, man. That's what I hear because like cats is so fun to play against too. He's just a great soul. He's a great soul. Cats, very wonderful person, very funny, wholesome dude. I never talk to him that much, but anytime I do, I'm happy I get to. But playing him is one of the most frustrating things I ever have to deal with in Smash. His playstyle is a total 180 of mine. Mm-hmm. And his character benefits off of my neutral. So, like, I have to play in ways where I don't use grenades as a way to get in, but a way to bait. And it just throws me off so hard that I just, I break my own mental before the game even starts. You're already just like, I've been in this situation before. I know it's going to happen. I can't do yeah, anything about like, it. I don't, like, I don't want to do this. Like, that's why you'll see me play almost any character in the world except Snake versus him. Because it's just, I, I want to find any possible way around, like, yeah, not, you know, having him heal 300% in a match. Woo! That sounds like cheeks. Like, he, of course, he's using the character the way that you're supposed to, and he's playing right, he's playing well. It's just like, it's very frustrating. It's just for on you on end. your perspective, yeah. yeah, on your end, it's just like, it's, it's, it's just frustrating. So defeating. It's so I defeating. get that. All right, when the last one is going to be. Which IE player do you respect the most? And not like, not respecting in neutral, I mean. I mean, respecting as a competitor, as a player, and as a person overall in the community. This is. Like, are you talking. Okay, so. I asked Hamster respect... the same question, too. Do, do, do you mean, like, I respect us in, like, like their growth or, like, or just, like, wow, like, that's, like, them. Like, what they do is so, like, I, It's inspired. up to you. It's how you define it. Oh, wow. That leaves I, it so open. And... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can, um, you, you can respect so many people. I mean, I, I'm not saying... I respect, I respect, yeah, like, I respect everybody in the IE. Like, yeah. I don't, like, look down on anybody in the IE. I just feel like that one person, you're just, like, what they do for the game or what they did for you or what they did, uh, as like their growth as a player, like you said before, it could be any any meeting you want, and, and I believe it purposely open ended for you to define it how you want to define it. It's it's got to be Razo. Hmm. It has to be Razo. The person who you... made the intro track to this series. See, plug him now. Razo <laughs> PCA. Follow him <laughs> on uh, Twitch and uh, Twitter and Razo EDM on YouTube and so There um, it is, EDM. But yeah, right? so Razo, oh, wow. he's one of the main reasons why I am where I am in Ultimate. Mm. If not the main reason, because of the countless hours I spent playing with him, doing life advice, mm -hmm. doing scratch advice, doing just anything, like... I, I'm so thankful for all the time I've been able to spend with him. And it's it's it makes me sad. He's one of the people I miss the most. Not being able to see him like yeah. at events and everything. It's You can see him on Twitch though. Yeah. Say less. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he yeah. I, I accredit most of my growth to him. That's nice. That's awesome. He, yeah. He like he has just helped me push through like the walls and the barriers and the ceilings of like my competitive growth and i i would not be anywhere close to what i've done without him like i know my heights are not the highest but what i've gotten to is mostly because of him that's awesome yeah it's those people that it's those people in smash in general or in your community it can just be in ie you know it could be in any of your any of your communities whoever's listening you know in your respective communities those people who keep you going you know want to get better and keeps you coming back for more you know not just to see them play but wanting for you yourself to get better you know it's those it's those people that like you said keep you going you know and i know i know like idolizing players is not good and or not it, it, it's I nowadays think, yeah, it's yeah. not to be that good but he, i wouldn't say i idolize him but you i idolize the growth. i look at it as like if he can do it 
I can do it. And that's what it means by like saying respecting that person. You know, you're just like, yeah. regardless if I hate playing him or love playing him, like I respect him as a player and as a friend of my own and as a person that, you know, I uh, look up to, you know? Absolutely. You know? And, and there's nothing toxic about that. It's just what you do with it. It can be toxic, you know? Most most of the time, if not, it's usually not, you know? It's just a personal thing. And each to each person, their own, you know? Yeah, like a personal vendetta or something, but yeah. no, with, like, just seeing how far he's, like, grown in Smash and, like, reached out helping hands to so many players and just, like, been so genuine and nice and, like, showing of how to get better mm-hmm. and not only Smash, but, like, general life advice and other things like that where yeah. he's helped, like, a lot of people out and the I wouldn't trade any of the time that I've spent like that for anything like the the growth has been ridiculous and Mm -hmm. just the sheer dedication he has for everything he does is inspiring i agree i agree well that's a great part wholesome part to leave it off on i love what you said about raza i definitely agree with everything you said and i really do appreciate you being on this uh, episode with me toski really appreciate taking the time out of your day to uh be on here with me Thank you very much for having me, Dan. I'm very grateful that you chose and asked me to, you know, be here today. It's funny because you were just talking about it. I was just like, ah, want to be on it? Sure. Right. Okay. <laughs> like, oh, hey, by the way. And I'm like, you know what? Run it. Run it. <laughs> but, I'm running right now. But exactly. No, like, no, thank you again for having me. I, I love this idea of being able to just show, like, different perspectives and mm-hmm. intro sites into you know how everyone yeah. feels about this amazing community we built i appreciate those words thank you man uh before we before we uh conclude uh this episode i want to give you an opportunity to shout yourself out shout anybody out you want to shout out um and uh tag your social media as well where, where can people find you and everything and tell people what you got going on if you have any projects or anything you want people to look forward to or want to know about this is uh, your moment right now uh, let people know about your social media and shout out anybody you want to do so uh first of all shout outs to you again for having me here (laughs) i appreciate it very much appreciated uh socials are either gonna be you know at posky or i i don't even know my instagram is man (laughs) like (laughs) uh, that's not important just follow me on twitter twitter's a place place. uh shout outs to mtm crew you know that's my personal smash family of course Mm -hmm. the ie is a family but they're like the real real homies mm-hmm. in there and all of them are like you know wonderful wonderful people uh let me see i guess I, i'll plug it uh, i keep lying and saying that i'm gonna start streaming and i never do it but bro, when you were drink out. when you were drinking dr pepper on stream <laughs> bro, that's my, i i wish i had a sub button when i had that bro oh save that vibe save it <laughs> Save that vod, bro. That was the most amazing thing I came into ever. You just like zoomed in on your eyes, drinking Dr. Pepper. If y'all want to see stuff like that, you better follow him on Twitch. If you want to find stupid stuff to laugh at, um, <laughs> go to slash Toski Dylan. Uh, I have a sub button. You can give me money if you want. I'm not going to force you to. Uh, but you appreciate it. But you but, yeah, I, got, I got some uh, killer notifs. I'm working on an emote because, you know, nice. I want to find reasons to stream nice but yeah no I, that's 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 about it okay well Tosky, and then hell yeah dude okay well Tosky, thank you again for being on this show i appreciate it uh thank you for everybody who's listening to and supporting the for supporting the series i appreciate it. i see all the messages you guys are sending and i appreciate all you guys um undivided support um and definitely look forward to more episodes i'm happy having a little more i'm having much more ie people on uh, the show and if you have anybody in mind that you want to like campaign for or something or saying like hey you should have them on here you know make it something on tw- on twitter and let me know uh let me know at dan listo d-a-n-l-i-s-t-o-o you can find me there um and also uh if you guys have any questions you think you want to ask guests or any questions about like strategies or getting better and smash in general that you would want to ask a uh, top player or a guest or anybody on the show uh, feel free to send me the message, send me the question. I'll definitely have it on the next episode as soon as I can. Okay. Toski, right. again, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank I appreciate you for it. having me. Thank you, man. I appreciate everyone listening. You guys have a great rest of your day, night, evening. Everyone, take care.